Coach Corey Ween, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be nine principles for setting definite dates. Well, interestingly enough, I got three emails, literally one after another, all on this same topic. And I haven't done a video newsletter on definite dates in probably a couple years. So I figured, hey, must be the universe's way of telling me I should do a video on definite date setting. So I wrote down nine principles that are the most common important things to keep in mind when you're trying to set a date to make sure the girl keeps it, and especially if she's kind of on the fence about you and not sure she really wants to go out with you, how to handle those objections. So she said, says to herself, you know what, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and see what happens. So I got three emails I'm going to go through with you. I'm going to go through a quote that I wrote on this topic first, and then I'm going to go through the principles, and then we're going to discuss each one of the emails. So the quote says, a person's personality is a reflection of who they are. Their attitude towards you is a reflection of how you are showing up in their life. If you act like a person of value and see yourself as having value, you'll never agree to terms that diminish your value in your eyes or theirs. If anyone treats you or tries to treat you like you do not matter or are not very valuable to them, then you must let them go and move on to find someone who appreciates you. Allowing others to disrespect you or take you for granted enables and invites their continued mistreatment. This also lowers their level of respect for you. It is impossible for people to love you when they do not respect you. True love is freedom. Love for yourself means you simply will not stick around or let other people stick around in your life who try to diminish your magnificence in any way. Give people the permanent gift of missing you when they demonstrate disrespectful and devaluing behavior towards you. So with that in mind, let's go through these nine principles and then roll right into the emails. The first principle says, it's always best to ask, when are you free to get together? Or, what's your schedule like this coming week? Or, what's your schedule availability like this week to meet up? It's much easier to ask her when she is available and then pick one of those days and times that you are also available instead of asking her out for specific days and times before you know her availability. The idea is you want to be successful. You want to find out, hey, what's your schedule like? When are you open? You close your mouth and you wait for her to speak instead of just saying, how about we get together Saturday at 8? Because then she say, oh, I got plans. It's much easier and you'll be a lot more successful. You just ask her to tell you when she's available and then see what your schedule, how they match up and make a date based on that. Number two, only make dates with women who seem excited and enthusiastic about making a date with you. Way too many of us guys pay only attention to our attraction level towards a woman and yet we completely ignore the fact that they just – there's no enthusiasm in their voice. There's no level of excitement towards going out on a date with you. Think about it. If you're extending an invitation to a woman to spend time with you, that's the greatest gift that you can give any human being, the gift of your time. And if somebody has the attitude of, eh, their voice is just kind of monotone and, and flat, why? Why spend your time? Why spend your money going out with somebody like that? Why go out on a date and work to try to get somebody to fall for you over the course of several dates? When you can go out with somebody who really likes you to start out with and then you'll have a great first date and a great second date and an even better third date as opposed to having to warm her up over a couple of weeks because she wasn't that into you. I've done both in my life and while it is nice to stroke your ego and get a girl to fall for you that really wasn't that into you but to begin with, my personal experience, love at first sight, going out with somebody who has an attraction level of an 8. On a scale of 1 to 10, the moment you meet is a thousand times better than trying to go out with somebody for several weeks before they really start liking you. I personally, that's my preference at this point in my life. But you can do whatever you want. Number three, the more resistance you encounter when trying to set a date, the higher the likelihood she will be a no-show, turn you down, 
give you a non-answer or cancel your date. Number four, never accept a maybe date. If you hear the word maybe when you ask a woman out, withdraw the offer and say this. It sounds like you are unsure of your schedule. Why don't we just do it another time? That's what we call the takeaway in sales. And when you say that, you have to shut up. You can't say anything else. You must wait for her to respond even if there's like a five or ten second response because ye who speaks first in that negotiation will lose the upper hand. And the idea is to negotiate on your behalf to get terms that are to your liking. You don't get what you deserve in life. You only will get what you negotiate. So be a great negotiator. Too many of us are shitty negotiators for ourselves and we always put ourselves back at the back of the line and it's just not necessary. So she'll either back up and accept your terms, meaning you're in. So if there's a woman that's just kind of, eh, I'm not really crazy about this guy, but then you withdraw the offer like that and then you pause when she's like, oh, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. And then you just you pause, well, when you withdraw the offer, say, no, no, I, I, okay, well, I can definitely get together Saturday. And I wrote about an example in my book about a woman that was doing that to me and it was just because I had screwed up with her several years before. But for those of you that haven't read the book, go to my website or go to Amazon or audible.com and download it. It's available now. Learn the fundamentals. Don't just sit here and try to cherry pick a few things from videos. You won't be successful long term. And I've done enough videos over the years of guys that didn't listen to me. And as a matter of fact, there's a guy in here that didn't learn the book very well that he fucked up with a girl he was dating. It's one of the three emails I'm going to go over. I go over that shit over and over and over again. There's a reason I say 10 to 15 times. Or just unenthusiastically, if, if she just, she'll either, if she accepts your terms and you're in, or she just unenthusiastically says, okay, a flat okay when you say, well, let's just do it another time. She's not that into seeing you and she could, she could give two fucks about going out with you, which means you're out. You could also say, it sounds like you're unsure of your schedule. Why don't you just get in touch with me when you figure out your schedule and we can plan something then? And if she just says, okay, they say, great. Now, guys will say that. I talk to guys all the time. They'll say something like that and then a day or two goes by and he goes, she hasn't reached out and then they start calling and texting. You've got to be congruent with your words. You can't tell a woman to get in touch and then two or three days later when you can't take it anymore because she hasn't reached out, go, hey, did you figure out your schedule yet? It makes you look like a poussoir. Makes you look like a big giant floppy cock. It makes you look like a mangina. Women don't like squishy weak guys. Never contact a woman again if you told her to get in touch with you. If you're if you said, Well get in touch with me when you figure your schedule out, you have to wait to hear from her. And if she never gets in touch with you, then you're never going to speak again and that's it. Think about it. You want to spend your time with somebody who's excited to be with you. Number five, never accept a call back to verify the plans or call back to confirm the plans type of date. Meaning you set the date and then she's like, well, just call me to, to tighten things down. Just say, I don't know, my schedule is very busy and I only got one or two days that I can get together and see you. So if you're not sure about your schedule – then let's just do it some other time. You say nothing. You've got to wait for her to respond. I know that's hard sometimes if you've never done that before, but that can be the difference between getting a date, getting blown off, or blowing a chance where you could have had somebody if you'd have just responded properly. Because if you accept a date where she says call to verify, when you do call to verify, she'll either ignore you completely and ghost you or just say, no, sorry, can't make it. Because it's kind of like, eh, do I really want to go out with this guy? And then you withdraw the offer. It's like, because she was all full of herself thinking I'm so awesome and I got a dozen guys like him lined up to go out with me. Why should I go out with him? He's not even that cute. But if you say something like that, you're like, you're standing up to her. You're expressing dominance. You're expressing that, hey, my time is valuable and if you're going to give me a, a maybe response, then I'll just make plans with somebody else. You don't have to throw somebody else in her face. 
Let's just say, hey, well, it doesn't sound like you're real sure of your schedule, so why don't we just do it some other time? Because that statement, you're basically, without saying it, you're, you're wanting to know, how much do you really like me? Are you really into me? Are you worth my time? It just completely flips the script. It's a way you take your power back. Women who have low interest, they'll tell you to call back to confirm. Or maybe the guy they really want to go out with they haven't heard from yet. Never take that. Never be a backup. It's all negotiation. These are subtle things. It might not seem like a big deal, but they make a massive difference. Number six, if she says something may come up or she may have to do something else, never accept a date like that. Definite plans or no deal. Withdraw the offer. Because sometimes you'll make plans. You say, go, well, I may have to do this or I may have to just say, well, when do you know you're definitely free so we can make a date? And she goes, eh, 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 I don't know, I'm not sure. And say, great, figure out your schedule and get back to me and we'll plan something then. And you got to wait to hear from her. And if you don't hear from her, guess what? She wasn't that into you. Don't waste your fucking time. Number seven, a definite date means you have a definite day for the date to happen, a definite time it will happen, and you have a definite place to meet her or pick her up. If you are picking her up, get her address when making the date or withdraw the offer. Definite date means you already have her address. I've talked to many guys over the years to get most of the plans set up and they figure, oh, I'll just text her the day of the date and say, hey, what's your address? And then they, she never responds. If she gives you her address, it means you're coming to pick her up at that time. That's where we determine whether she really wants to see you or not. And you want to spend your time with women who really want to see you, who appreciate and value what you're offering. Number eight, make sure she agrees and accepts the terms of a date. Don't just tell a woman when and where and expect her to show up. In other words, don't meet a girl and talk to her for a minute or two and then make a date for a week in advance and just say, hey, be here at, uh, let's meet the Cheesecake Factory at eight. She's like, okay. And then you think, oh, I got a date. She ain't going to show up for that. Women are not dogs and will not follow your orders. The idea is to extend an invitation for a date and then give her the time to respond by keeping your mouth shut and waiting for her to reply before you speak or message her again. The idea is you're, you're offering to get together and if she's interested, she'll say yes. Some guys I've seen, they're just kind of like, they have the attitude like, hey, I run shit here. Hey, just meet me here at such and such place. Some women will say yes to your face and think, this guy's a jerk off control freak. And they'll accept your date and they know full well right in the spot they have no intention of showing up. And they want to stand you up to teach you a lesson. There's a right way to do this and there's a wrong way to do this. The right way leads to success and bliss. And the wrong way leads to you scratching your head going, what the fuck? Number nine, always make sure if you are meeting her somewhere that you say this. Okay, so I'll see you at 123 Oak Street. Obviously, that's a fictitious address. Wednesday at 7 p.m. This is really important to say things this way and also make sure she complies and agrees to it. If something comes up, I will call you and likewise, you have my number in case something comes up on your end. Otherwise, I will just see you there. If you get there first, get us a table. If I get there first, I will get us a table. Does that sound good? Are you in? Zip your mouth, wait to hear from her. If she says, that sounds like fun, sounds great, I'm definitely in, awesome. Get her address. If you're meeting her someplace, obviously, or I mean if you're picking her up, but if not, Again, you got to make sure she says yes to this and accepts the terms. Because when you put the offer out there and then you're quiet in sales, this is where the objections come in. In other words, the buyer's thinking about signing on the dotted line, but uh. so if she really is interested in going out with you, she'll enthusiastically say, "Yeah, that sounds great, awesome. I look forward to seeing you there." Then, but if she's not really into it. Even though she said, yeah, she, when you ask her, does that sound good? Are you definitely in? She'll go, well, I might have to do something with my sister or I might have to help a friend move or I might have to take my dog to the vet or I may have to go out of town. So why don't you call to verify? That's what you're looking for. 
Women are definitely in. We'll make the date. No hesitation. No bullshit. And they'll keep it. Ones that are on the fence trying to be nice because they don't want to reject you to your face. That's why it's so important to use silence. Silence when you put it out there and see what she says. So with that in mind, let's go through these emails. Here's the first one. Guy says, hi, coach. I live in the Caribbean and I've been following your work since the beginning of the year. I read vibrations. I have your book and I'm in the third time of reading it. Well, okay, so this is May, so it's about five months and you've – come on, dude. You got to step up your game, homie. You want to be proficient. You want to know this stuff so well you can teach a class on it. Three times in five months, you can do better, man. And besides, if you're having problems, this is what happens when you really don't know the book backwards and forwards. I follow your principles and I got phone numbers from girls and I made dates. They said yes and I asked them when they're available. They gave me complete answers and I told them the time – notice what he says. I told them the time. Woman, you're going to show up at the Cheesecake Factory at 8 o'clock or else. I remember I was probably about 17, 18 years ago. I, I made a date with this girl and I remember at the time she's like – because she was giving me this, oh, I'm not sure. Why don't you call to verify? And I just said, well, if you're not sure, then let's, you know, I my schedule's real busy and let's make definite plans. And her response back was, oh, you're one of those. And then so she proceeded to make the date with me, and I was going, ah. well, guess what? She didn't show up, and that fucking girl did that shit on purpose just to teach me a lesson. It's really important to listen. For the fourth time now, I have been stood up by girls. I waited for half an hour, no sign of them and no text or phone call from them. Any advice because I'm tired of being stood up. So my quick response to that is you're either setting dates with women who have low to no interest and they don't care about blowing you off. Think about it. If she, if you were Brad Pitt, do you think she'd just blow you off and not show up? Hell no. She'd fucking be there with bells and whistles and she'd be texting you the day of, hey, are we still on for today? That's why it's so important. If you just met a woman and you're only talked to her for two or three minutes, don't set a date for a week in advance. If you're meeting somebody and you want to set a date, it's either – it could be later that night or the next day or two that you're setting a date. But if you're calling her on the phone and you talk for 15, 20 minutes and your date's three or four days in advance, you should be fine as long as you follow what I mentioned in the nine principles I went over earlier in the video. And the part where he says, I told them when and where to meet up. Because I've seen a lot of guys do. They just tell a girl because they think, hey, I'm being, I'm being dominant. I'm being masculine. I'm telling them things instead of asking. And women just go along with it and they know they're going to blow you off. And like I said, women aren't dogs and are not going to follow your orders. The idea is you're extending an invitation, this wonderful invitation to join you for an evening. And you want to see an enthusiastic, yeah, absolutely, this would be great. We'll have a lot of fun. And so this guy basically was doing, he's paying attention to his interest. He's not, like I said, he's either asking out women have low interest and he's only looking at the fact that he really likes these girls and he's ignoring their lack of interest. And especially if you're just telling them where to go instead of asking them if they're definitely in like I went over in, in the nine principles. And yeah, you're, the likelihood that you're going to get stood up and blown off is going to be really high. Let's go through the second email. A guy says, hi, coach. I'm wondering if you could help me here. I will do my best. There's this girl that I was friends with when we were like 13 years old and now we're 18 and she's smoking hot, he says. So I found her on the social network. I ended up asking her out on Snapchat. So she told me, didn't I give you my number? Right to my WhatsApp, so I wrote her to set a date. I didn't set the time, place, or day. That's part of the problem. Men are supposed to be direct, decisive, get right to the fucking point. And when you're vague and caught kind of all over the ice, you're basically acting like an insecure girl who's unsure of herself. That's not attractive. You're acting like a feminine woman instead of a man who's direct, decisive, who's busy, who's got shit to do, things to go, places to go, and people to see. And that just makes you go, eh, oh, another floppy cock kind of guy, another weak guy. That's just because most guys act this way. The idea is you want to set yourself apart from the other dudes. 
He says, I wanted to meet her the next day. She told me she couldn't go out till the weekend. I told her, okay, then in the weekend it is. That was a Wednesday. So on Friday, I asked her, hi, is the date still up? Boy, that sounds really confident. In other words, hey, if you haven't found anything better to do, I'm still available, me. (laughs) It sounds really weak, dude. And she told me, I think so. If I don't go to my aunt's city, which is in Valencia, Venezuela. So in other words, she's basically saying, yeah, if I got nothing else to do, maybe I'll go out with you. Because guys like this, they'll keep calling every day. She doesn't have to do nothing. And he's like a last resort thing, the type of dude. I mean, you're setting yourself up. You're inviting her to treat you this way. And I tell her, okay, do you want to go to a taco, go to Taco Palace, which is a restaurant tomorrow afternoon? And she told me, yeah, yeah. So the Saturday comes up and I saw that she went to clubs on Thursday and Friday night. Although she told me that she couldn't go out those days. Uh huh. It's not that she couldn't go out. She just couldn't go out with you because she had better things to do with her time. And you basically acted like you really weren't that worthy of her time. You, in essence, treated her like a celebrity. And so therefore, she treated you like you're just another piece of bubble gum stuck to the bottom of her shoe. It sucks. And I write her, hello, are you going to your aunt's city? And she didn't respond for like four hours because she's thinking, oh, what can I tell him? I don't really want to go out with this guy. Because your answer is you've already expressed that you weren't sure of yourself. And when she answered, she told me, yes, I'm going in about a half hour. So I told her, oh, okay, so we'll leave it to next week then. And she told me, yes, I think it's the best. Then I tell her, hey, I'm going to be in some place tomorrow. That place is on the way to her aunt's city. If you want, you can pass over. I'll be there. She read the message and didn't respond. You're just like begging her, please spend time with me. If you just cut right to the chase, say, hey, we should get together. When, when are you available? What's your schedule like? And she goes, uh, I don't know. I say, great. Shoot me a message back when you figure out your schedule. We'll plan something in. I got to run. I'll talk to you later. That's what a man who's used to getting dates would say because the thought of being stood up or blown off or that his offer is not really that big a deal, that shit wouldn't even be crossing his mind. But you, you're acting like a guy who can't get a date. And women interact with guys like that all the time. They just, they just blow them off. So I really want to go out with this girl. I know you do and guess what? She knows too. I really, really like her. Well, it doesn't matter how much you like her. It has no effect on her attraction towards you. And I don't want to screw it up. Man, eh, you pretty much already did that, dude. I at least want to go on one date so she can realize that I'm a good catch. Well, you kind of fumble with the football right out of the gate, dude. It's like... Right in the Super Bowl, your first possession, you get the, the kick comes, you, you catch it, then boom, it just falls falls right out of your hand, and one of the the other defenders grabs the ball, and now they got great field position, and you they force a turnover. Not much you can do at that point except watch the other team score. I don't know if she's attracted to me or if she really wants to see me, dude. If she really wanted to see you, she would have made plans, and the way you behaved. She may have thought you were cute or eh, I'll go out with them but your, all of your answers here and the way you behaved and you kept pursuing and basically begging her to spend time with you turned her off. I don't want to bother her too much asking her out again so what would you do? Would you wait three or four days to set a date with a time and place? At this point, I would wait two whole weeks. I wouldn't call her. I wouldn't do nothing. Unless she messages you directly, I would ignore her. Even though you brought up next weekend, don't do nothing. Wait two full weeks and if she doesn't reach out to you at all and say, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to? Then one more, make one more attempt. Hey, I wanted to see what your schedule's like. I want to get together and have dinner. I want to get together and have drinks or whatever. She gives you a vague answer. It says, gee, I'm not sure. I might have to work. I may have to just say, great. doesn't sound like you know what your schedule is, so get in touch with me when you figure it out and we'll plan something in. And then you're never going to reach out again after that. However, if before the two weeks go, goes by, say another week goes by and she goes, hey, what's – women typically will do this. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? What are you up to? Take your time responding because she's already done that to you. Wait a few hours. If it's at night, like 8 or 9 o'clock – after 8 o'clock at night, text her back the next morning like around 11 or 12. She treats you like a low priority so therefore she needs to be a low priority in your life. How do I ask her out again since the previously set date didn't occur? Well, like I said, if she reaches out – 
Assume she wants to see you and make a definite date. Definite day, definite time, definite place. Don't be asking her to make decisions. Don't be asking her, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Invite her to join you at some place that you think is really cool and make definite plans or withdraw the offer. Follow the nine principles and you should be fine. But at this point, I'd say you pretty much screwed up and there's a really good chance you won't hear from her again. But like I said, wait two weeks. If you don't hear from her, make one more attempt. If she gives you a BS response and just say, well, when you figure out your schedule, get in touch and then you're done forever. You're, pursue, you're never going to pursue her again. You're going to call. Nothing. Even if she reaches out and you start setting dates, you will always wait for her to reach out after that point. So let's go through the third email. He says, Corey, I'd first like to thank you for sharing your findings about relationships. I am surprised how on point everything is. Well, might not always be right, but I'm never wrong. I'm a woman who benefits from your ebook and videos because my relationships are with women. A lesbian. All right, I like lesbians. In the past, I dated this gorgeous German woman who was funny, caring. She would cook for me most mornings, fit and desired by many, and I couldn't believe how lucky I was because my relationship with her resulted from teachings of your book. Unfortunately, once I got with her, I made a huge mistake and stopped paying attention to your book. That's not all I can do. All I can do is suggest and gently lead. If you toss it out the window just because you're hooking up, you got to read it 10 to 15 times, even if you're a lesbian. Because even in lesbian relationships, there's a masculine one and there's a feminine one. There's always the one that's more masculine, acts like the man, and there's always one that acts more feminine. I've talked to women that are bisexual, and when they date men, they're very submissive, and they like the men to take control. But when they're dating women, they like to be the masculine one when they're dating women, and they like to date very feminine and submissive women. It's very fascinating and interesting. But even lesbian women, when they, if they're a masculine essence and they act more like a woman, They'll get rejected for the same reasons that heterosexual guys get rejected. When she eventually told me that she just wanted to be friends and I remembered I remembered to pick your book back up, I was in her bed literally the next day. Sounds like you were ready with the proper answer. I have been creating attraction. She's been texting me first, asking what I'm doing, wondering why I'm not with her, even telling me things like I better not be getting messages by anyone else. Here's the reason why I put the word date in quotation marks. We have never been on an actual date. I am over her house often. However, she always tends to shy away from setting definite dates. Some are fun when I bring it up. I have started telling her, let me know when you're available to go have a good time. She finally replied that she wants things to be spontaneous. Well, if you're busy, you can't just drop what you're doing and I wouldn't just drop what you're doing to go spend time with her. Make her fucking wait. And she says, hey, can we get together today? I say, no, I'm sorry. I got plans. But you know, maybe this weekend, what's your schedule like? When are you free to get together? She goes, oh, I want to be spontaneous. So it's like, well, you know, I'm always pretty booked up, so get in touch with me and maybe I'll be able to squeeze you in or maybe I can find some time for you and wait to hear from this particular woman. I'd let her do 100% of the pursuing from now on. Every once in a while, when I ask her out, she says no. I go with another woman and Snapchat how much fun we're having and she gets noticeably jealous. How do I set dates with her to go to places that I know she will enjoy that will create even more attraction. Well, like I tell guys all the time, your job as the masculine essence in this case is to create an opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. It's that simple. This particular woman, because you've done so many, so much screwing up, your pursuit's over forever. You're never going to call or text her again first for any reason. If you hear from her, assume she wants to see you, make a definite date. And I would, in this particular case, the next three dates need to be at your house. She must come to you. And the only distance you're going to be willing to travel is the distance it takes to go from wherever you are in your house to your front door to let her in. It's that fucking simple. She comes to your house or no deal. And if she comes over three times in a row and you hang out and have fun and hook up successfully, then you can start going out, picking her up or meeting her out. But follow what I teach in seven principles to get next back at this point and you should be hopefully fine. And if you'd like to get my help personally, go to my website, click the products tab and book whatever coaching option works for you and I will talk to you soon.